Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. And unfortunately, I wish I could find a good way to make the title, but the title is was difficult because there's so much happening that it kind of fits everywhere. But uh, what I see here is that um, the word white privilege has really sparked a massive amount of racism in this country. And then we have also where uh, BLM has also sparked another mass, uh, uh, I would say, a massive amount of racism in this country as well. Uh, it seems that racial tensions are getting worse, except it's not the white people committing these acts, it's the black people. And I would like for all of you to, all the leftists and everybody to start talking and start seeing something that you may want to correct yourself. So if all these people that are white and they are actually racist, um, then why are we seeing a great number of more black people, mostly kids and teenagers, committing these acts of violence that are uh, against white kids in particular because, you know, I've been seeing it a lot more frequently now. Um, this is happening consistently. This happened a few times last year, and this is happening a lot more frequently this year. The little girl was attacked by two white boys uh, being punched, nine-year-old, and then there was a, another kid that was uh, picked up and sh uh, picked up by another black kid and then thrown onto the ground. Uh, I'll show you that video as well. So, uh, I think there's a huge issue here with black people being very violent and I would say racist towards white people. I wonder why that is. Well, guys, without further ado, I'll show you the actual video. This one is where, uh, I would say a white kid was attacked by a group of black school kids and yelling white, and yelling a bit, um, white privilege, I may believe, or, uh, uh, what have you. And it doesn't seem to be doing quite good. Take a look. Police say a number of black students forced several white students to state Black Lives Matter against their will. Gwyneth Falloon is following this story for us tonight and joins us live now. And Gwen, what have you learned? Megan, the Springfield Police Report says the incident took place here at Kenwood Elementary last Friday at recess. Allegedly, a group of black students forced several white students to say black lives matter. And if they didn't comply or try to avoid the situation, they were chased down. Some even reported being dragged, pushed to the ground or even punched in the face. On Monday, Springfield police were called to Kenwood Elementary about an incident that took place the previous Friday at recess. Just because it's reversed, it's still not all right. A police incident report states a group of black students forced a number of white students to say black lives matter against their will. Those who refused or attempted to avoid the situation were chased down. The report says one student was punched in the head. He was okay. thrown to yes. the ground. He was actually one of the ones thrown to the ground. And Crystal and Daniel Har have an 11 year old son in sixth grade at Kenwood. They say their son did not tell them about the event. However, the school contacted them three days later. I don't understand how it got as far as it did. Because the teachers should have been paying closer attention. Springfield police are currently investigating the incident. However, the Haars say their son is scared to go to school. He's not excited to go to school at all. He, yeah. He's terrified. The school has provided a statement saying they are aware of the incident and are, quote, committed to providing our students with a safe learning environment where they look forward to attending every day. No further information was provided, but the parents say more needs to be done and those in question should be held accountable for their actions. I really feel like they should at least be expelled. Now, statements have been taken, and the police report says suspects could face charges of menacing and assault. There is also surveillance video of the incident. However, this is an ongoing investigation, so that has not been released. As the story continues to develop, we'll be sure to bring you the latest information as it becomes available. Back to you. This is the kind of racial division and hate that I was speaking about when people started speaking about white privilege and black uh, CRT, and then we'll go down to obviously this stupid, uh, well, I would say, uh, Black Lives Matter. I think it, these three things have done absolutely nothing besides cause division and hate, and we're seeing the actual rip course of this. Now, instead of it being the white people that were beating up, killing, and killing black people, oh, killing black people, it is now the black people that are hitting and potentially trying to kill uh, white people. So, um, the whole situation's been reversed. And you know who all started this? Yeah, it was the Democrats. And it was also you far leftists that were pushing this white privilege bullshit. 
Notice how when you try to fill a whole bunch of kids full of this stuff that's saying that the white kid is that the white people are always out to get you. They are the reasons why you're just why you are in fear, why they why you are not making out in life and what have you. They seem to take out all their anger and frustrations out onto the people that they think or that are been taught that that's the problem. Well, now you have this. Now you have the racial tensions, the racial hate, uh, the division that the media ever so craved for. Because now you're acting like, oh, well, this is not happening. And by the way, the media won't cover this, by the way. Because they see that black people attacking white people is A-OK. -okay, but when it's white people attacking black people, it's a problem. See where I'm getting at? You, leftists and Democrats, have caused this. It really is true. You caused the hate. And every time you think of white privilege, say here's, think to yourself that you're the racist one. Now, I don't think that anybody really wants to call out and say that because they don't want to be proven wrong. Well, unfortunately for you, you are. And people like Al Sharpton here is actively showing that he is part of the problem. And I'm going to go over after this video and explain unto why he's part of the problem and why he's a racist douchebag. Take a look. We're only sleepy folk. Thinks the process stops with woke. When you wake up, you get up. Come on, come on. And you go to work. We ain't laying in the bed woke. We up. And we went from woke to work. And we gonna work on you, DeSantis, until we tell the whole story. There's some rumor. Well, the rallying cry uh, came from faith leaders, student leaders, a lot of students, hundreds of students, and uh, many civil rights groups, uh, really standing up saying that they're not going to let uh, this governor uh, tamper with history. Uh, they're really talking about censorship here. And even though they're saying, oh, no, we're doing black history, but they're being very selective, and they're really trying to tamp down uh, parts of the story that points out the contradictions in American history and what we had to overcome. And it's not in a negative, it's to show the strength of people. You can't talk about American history without talking about what blacks and women and the LGBTQ people went through. And DeSantis wants to pivot his uh, campaign for president. I call him Baby Trump. Uh, he wants to be Baby Trump and do it in a, in a different way uh, to pit us one against another and Americans against another uh, type of American. And uh, we are not going to allow that to happen. Just like we had to fight uh, educational segregation with a governor standing in the door, we will not have another governor standing in the way of history. I said to Al Sharpton, you racist bastard, that is not what the case is. I will even show you a clip momentarily of what uh, Ron DeSantis was talking about. First off, I think the biggest thing that you need to understand here, you racist, is that um, you're the one that is causing division and hate. I'm pretty sure you're not speaking on the actual black kids beating up white kids uh, quite frequently recently in 2023. It's been a huge problem, and you're not talking about that. By the way, black history is American history. Straight up. There is no black history that is American history. Now, if you want to go to black history, let's go to Africa, where that history is more prevalent. And that would be more in terms of black history. But you can't have black history without American history. It's literally impossible. You have it there. Black people are Americans. I am an American black person. Get over it. Get used to it, because it's the reality. Once you fit everybody into one single spot, into one thing to where it accounts for everybody, where an American is an American, regardless of race, you get rid of that whole segregation, you get rid of all that, uh, all that diversity, you get rid of everything, and you just happen to be that person. But what you're trying to do, Al Sharpton, is try to make black history just black history instead of just straight up American history where it doesn't mean, where it just means everybody. Black history is a se is segregation, buddy. Maybe you should probably learn on that. You probably didn't even learn about that in the history books because you're too damn stupid to realize it. So I think that maybe you need to be educated a little bit more, Al Sharpton. And I'd like to see you come and, and try to uh, rationalize and talk to me about this because I think you're a whole bunch of an idiot. Here's Ron DeSantis talking about exactly what CRT is, why he's removing it, and why there is a reason why we don't want it in our schools. Because... It's not teaching people to be non-racist or whatever you. It's teaching people to be racist. Take a look at this clip of Ron DeSantis. Going to eliminate 
all DEI and CRT bureaucracies in the state of Florida. No funding, and that will wither on the vine. And I think that that's very important because it really serves as an ideological filter, a political filter. You've seen different things. I mean, New College has really embraced that, and that's part of the reason I think it hasn't been successful in the enrollments down so much, uh, because I think people want to see uh, true academics, and they want to get rid of some of the uh, political window dressing that seems to accompany all this. So that's no longer going to be uh, in the state of Florida, and I think we probably are the first state uh, that's actually leading uh, by example. But I can tell you those bureaucracies are not representative of what the people of the state and the taxpayers. Very hard to find the clips of him speaking about this because it seems like the internet and Google and everybody else are trying to avoid talking about this situation. So it's quite interesting. Um, so we only have one more video to really show you guys. And this is in particular what we call uh, uh, what is going on in uh, America today. Uh, mostly this was two years ago during the, almost immediately after the George Floyd incident to where a group of black men started to attack another white guy holding his groceries. Now, I don't know about you guys, but it seems to be quite uh, interesting on to uh, what's been going on in here in America. And then after that, I'll show you the last couple of videos of uh, Keg getting slammed onto the ground uh, by some black people, and then we'll wrap this up. All right, guys. Yeah, Christine and Chris, the victim Mason says he was coming to the convenience store just to get a couple of groceries. He was at the front of the line when he says a group of guys tried to cut in line. He told them there's a line for a reason. Then they left and they waited for him outside and the surveillance camera there caught what happened next. It's just that sinking feeling to where it's just, well, there's nothing I can do now. The video clearly shows four guys walking up to Mason and attacking. He never lets go of his groceries as they take turns kicking and punching him on the ground, including in the face. The last to leave leans down to talk to him, then gives him one last punch. I was sitting there on the ground just kind of in shock. Didn't really know what to think. Mason didn't realize that it wasn't over there was a fifth guy. He comes up to me, kicks me in the face, and screams, Black Lives Matter. He came home, his face was all bloody, and he was holding his bags. Um, I just remember feeling instant panic. Uh, I was irate, I was confused, I was concerned for him, uh, and I wanted answers. Mason and his girlfriend, Kelly, hope someone recognizes his attackers. To me, it's kind of a shame that they were so just open with it. They were just okay with it at the end of it. I mean, no rush to get out. They went back into the store to buy more things. So he says they went back into the store to buy more things and then they left and then police arrived a little later afterwards and uh, after they left. He says he does not believe that this attack was racially motivated. And of course, police say if you recognize anybody in that video, please call. So yeah, as you can see, this uh, man was obviously attacked and in every single way that he was uh, just attacked for no simple particular reason. Uh, so uh, I think that the racism and the tensions are very, very high, as I've been saying. I don't think they're getting any better. And I think states such as uh, states like uh uh, Texas, Florida, and I think there's one other state that is trying to look to ban DEE and other stuff from schools is a great step forward um, because I think this will eliminate the actual amount of racism that's happening in this country. Um, teach kids about this stuff and it's bad. Now, we're not saying to eliminate uh, actual history. We're actually just putting them into, into American history into where American history will be allowed in terms of what's what happened to black people and then uh, and then particularly what how many good things the black people have done have raised in this country and that's going to do a lot more against the racial tensions than not so finally without further ado guys I will give you the video of the kid being slammed onto the ground and then I will also give you the kid that was being attacked by other people because you guys need to see this and so do the democrats because the media won't show this to you guys and i think democrats uh and people that are ignorant of it need to be shown so here you go <laughs> 
So there you have it. You have uh, one kid being choked, and then you have a kid being slammed onto the ground, all by black people. And I want to see wondering why the racial tensions are so high in current day. So what we'll do now is that we'll finally see exactly what I'm talking about here with the kid. So I realize that I cannot actually show this clip to you guys on YouTube because I would get banned for showing actual legitimate violence. Even though the last two videos were violence, they're very, very low key in my opinion and not too terribly bad. This one is really bad and it says teen who savagely beat nine year old girl on Florida school bus is charged with battery. And then you can also see here where the kid is obviously getting beaten. I will show you guys, I will give you guys a link to this, and you guys can view it at your leisure. Granted, it is pretty violent, so I digress. But what you guys are seeing here is a huge amount of racism propping up. Now, obviously this stuff wasn't going to take immediately. It takes time to indoctrinate and show the racism to kids, and then kids grow up and they become violent against other people. This is what I'm talking about, Democrats. You and people that are champing Democrats and anybody that was to say that all oh, the Democrats are helping black people. They're not really helping black people, but they're helping black people being put in jail. Mostly because they're creating racial tension and racial crimes. This is a constant thing that's happening and the only way we can stop is maybe to go against the democratic order for a tiny bit maybe and maybe go for people that are banning these type of very racial tension type of stuff. Not every white person is out to get you guys. Black people included. That's not a, really a thing. And the only thing that's happening is that you're being told as a fool that you are being hated against, wanting to hate against black, white people, and that's the only thing that, wants, that they want you to do. Create racial tension, create that racial divide, just to stay in power. So, what are you guys going to do? Leave a comment down below to try to, just, to see what you guys think is happening in our country. How much racism have you seen against white people in current day or black people? Like to know. Everybody's opinions matters here. Alright, that's it for the video. Like, subscribe, share. As always, take care.